hello and welcome to the show. I'm Nadia Giordana and you are watching Where Women Talk author interviews, where we talk to authors from all walks. Our guest today is Benjamin Sonic. He's a young science fiction writer, so let's not hang around here. Let's go talk to him and find out all about his debut book. Welcome to the show, Benjamin. Good. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you could be here today. Uh, you are <laughs> with Fox Point Publishing, is that right? That is correct. And uh, you uh, you have a, is this your debut book coming out? Yes, it is. It's far from my first manuscript, but it is definitely my, my first published book. I've also had some other uh, short stories published through uh, various mediums, but it is finally nice to have something of a decent, no, holdable, long, bigger story. So this is a very big milestone for me as an author. Give me a little bit of background about your writing history and how you how you got to this point. Well, I got to start with my mom, obviously, because she was the one that she was big. She taught us how to write and write well, which is very important. It wasn't I, when I was getting more into later high school. That was when I really started thinking more about writing a book for myself because I'd had I had stories in my head. And I thought, you know, I was always telling myself, you know, I got to put this on paper at some point. And then one day I finally had enough free time. I'm like, well, why don't I try it? So I started writing manuscripts, and the first one was obviously garbage, but I, I still haven't given up on it, even to this day. And yeah, even in college, I started going into, uh, I got my major in English, and I wanted something to do with that, so I minored in journalism. And now I'm a newspaper editor, so I, I keep writing for a living. Tell me about the newspaper you edit for. Yeah, I'm the editor for the Sox Center Herald, which is a bit of a... A smaller community newspaper but honestly those are kind of the more overlooked it, they're actually rather important newspapers and i'm not just saying this to toot my own horn here but because like with a smaller community newspaper you actually have room to run like the good stuff like a lot of other larger newspapers you you, you got to have all the calamities and the major crimes and all the stuff you, you can't not put that in there but with a good small community newspaper you can get information about local events, big community figures who might otherwise go overlooked, like uh, war veterans and stuff like that. So that's just part of my job. I've, I'm, I'm coming up on five years on it, uh, working in for uh, Star Publications in general, not just uh, being an editor. That's only been like two or three years. But yeah, I mean, it's a really great way actually to... Uh, really hone writing experience. I mean, I would recommend it to young writers. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I want my creative writing degree and, you know, English and put all that in and go like right into creative writing or something like that. Honestly, journalism is pretty overlooked in that regard because, I mean, it's all about writing and getting a reader's attention right away and then telling a compelling story, even if it's just like a city council meeting that you, you got to make it interesting. And uh, judging by my reader feedback, I've been doing a pretty good job over these years. I'll bet you're right. And now that I think of it, as I was looking you up and reading a little bit about you, there was, you made mention of something about your job as an editor and making you a better writer than Sinclair Lewis. Was that, was that you? <laughs> yes. Yes. That's me. Uh, that is, uh, yeah. Set, uh, well, I did ask people to ask me that, so th that's kind of my uh, my little joke. With the Sox Center Herald, uh, the big thing about Sox Center, stay here for more than five minutes, and you will know that we are the hometown, the boyhood home of America's first Nobel Prize winning author, Sinclair Lewis. He was born and raised here, and uh, the novel that uh, propelled him to fame and won him the Nobel Prize was kind of a satire on the small community mindset, but we love him anyway. And... One of his first jobs, I think it was his first paying job, like the like not just, you know, helping around the house or a farm or something like that, was working for the Sox Center Herald, my newspaper. And pretty soon after that, he was fired. And uh, like his joke was always like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm an old journalist. No, he kept getting fired from it until he became a renowned writer. So 
I think I think of it this way: Sinclair Lewis worked for the Herald, got fired, became a Nobel Prize winning author. Me, I worked for the Herald, I became the editor, though that means I'm a better writer, I guess. You didn't get fired yet, so there you go. Yeah. Well, I don't understand how uh, either. That's a fun story. I love that. Well, mm -hmm. tell us, tell us about this book. All right. Well, I mean. It has one of the weirder origins of any manuscript I've had, because usually when I'm writing anything, not a book, a short story, a, a news piece, what comes to me is like the story first and then names and titles and stuff like that. With Cyberwood, though, it was really weird because like I just sort of had the vague concept. You know, in science fiction, you have a lot with cybernetic people and sometimes cybernetic animals, which is, you know, it's good understandable, really good science fiction, but you don't get a lot about cybernetic plants, which, I mean, just listening to it like that sounds a little dull, but almost like anything, I thought about it and I was like, actually, this could be uh, an interesting story setting. So, and then as soon as I thought of that, the title Cyberwood just came into my head. Like I had the title before I knew anything about the story or the world or the biome or just anything about it. So I mean, I, I still have it in my writing notebook. I went right to my notebook and I wrote down the date and the word, just the word Cyberwood. Then uh, fast forward to uh, my first year as a journalist, when I had a little bit more free time, I could spend my, I spent my lunch breaks, you know, I could, you know, work on my writing or short stories and stuff. And that was 2018. And, you know, uh, NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month. I'd, I'd never done it before. And so I decided, you know, I need to get this uh, little writing feather in my cap. And as it turned out, you know, I, I, I had this cyberwood. It, the concept just wasn't letting me go. So I'm like, okay, that's a good sign for a story. I thought about it. I made a whole bunch of notes. I got the characters in. I just, I've got pages filled with just like random things that most of them made it in. But some notes I was looking through my notebook the other day. I'm like, acid bugs, where did that go? But as an aside, so I had it. I kind of knew where I was going to go with it when November roll, rolled around. And then I just started writing 2,000 words a day. By the 25th, I had 50,000 words. Yes, I did the math correctly there. Yes, I did. And then I just kept going with it until it was a little bit north of 90,000 words. And I had a good story, in my opinion. And then, of course, it was just uh, years, well, actually just a couple years of really just rereading it, uh, rehashing it, just double checking, nitpicking, all that stuff. And then uh, the way I got on Fox Point was through my sister, Katie Reuger, uh, author of Only the Brave, who has also been featured on this uh, on the show before. So everyone watching, look it up. Katie Reuger, R-O-I-G-E-R, -E Only the Brave. I've read the book. I strongly recommend it. I'm a sci-fi guy. It's not science fiction, and I recommend it. That's how much I like it. But anyway... Her book had just been accepted by Fox Point, and she let me know they were still open for submissions. And I'm like, well, I haven't gotten a rejection letter in ages, so I sent them Cyberwood. And uh, they actually gave a very enthusiastic response to it. They liked the way it went, the story, the characters, everything. And they even kind of they kind of streamlined the process to publication. Like it took a year from acceptance to the end because they were ready to get it out, and they even streamlined the editing process because they could tell I'd already been a pretty nitpicky with the details. Uh, uh, is this a, a one only or will there be a sequel or even more, more than that? We'll see. Well, one thing I do want to emphasize is that this was written as a standalone novel mm -hmm. and it does stand up on its own, but I will say without putting in any spoilers, I did leave plenty of room for a sequel in this. So I'm, and I'm already kind of bouncing around and stewing some ideas to, uh, you know, develop this world even more. Because, you know, while I, I did my best world developing with this, there's still plenty of cracks that need to be uh, filled in, more places where the spotlight didn't have time to go during the story. And that would really flesh out the world. So I just want to really get into it some more. So I don't know, hopefully if uh, we get enough of a good reader response and, you know, enough, then, yeah, I'm, I'd be more than willing to uh, to keep going. Do you uh, have any sage advice? Just if you want to write, start writing. 
because I mean, you, you could do the, I guess the research route, you can get Stephen King's on writing. You can memorize Strunk and White's elements of style. If you want to do that, good for you, go ahead. But honestly, one of the best ways to do it is write something and it will be terrible. There's a very, very high chance that whatever you write will be terrible. Take my word for it. I've been there. But then when you start writing, then everything else, you're not going to stop reading. You better not. You're not going to start reading or watching movies or just uh, just looking at other, you know, or just look, going on YouTube, looking at, you know, commentaries and stuff like that. Because when you start doing that, you start reading like a writer. You start looking at stories like a writer. Then you kind of get more and more ideas of your own. You, you take what's there and you just, it ends up in your mental blender. And then you can just go like, okay, I'm going to do this with this. I'm going to make a plot twist that works like this. And and then you can even go back to that original draft, that, that original story, if it just won't let you go, go back to it and apply what you know onto that. I mean, it might mean a total rewrite. Me, I thought I, I, I took that manuscript and I'm like, oh, I'll just edit here and there and everywhere. Well, now it's been almost, uh, oh, wait a minute. It was 10 years, just this last May. I started writing 10 years this last May. I, I completely forgot to celebrate that manuscript's birthday. But anyway, it's been 10 years and it's, I might as well have rewritten it. It, I basically started over from scratch and now I've got something better because I've all this time I've been writing, I've been practicing, I've been reading, I've been thinking about it. And yeah, so honestly, for me, it's also really good for impatient writers too. just start writing. Don't let rejection get you down. And uh, also, if you're interested in becoming a novelist, I mentioned earlier, earlier on uh, short stories, there is a market for those. Like there's a whole wide market for science fiction short stories, and it's a really good way to build up your writing cred before you, uh, you know, start submitting. Because you could either say, "Here's my first manuscript. What do you think?" Or you could go in like, "And I've been published uh, here, 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 and here." It'll give you a much better shot, and it'll even help you develop an audience in advance. So, uh, those are my two cents. That point about getting short stories published in smaller press magazines and papers, that's a very, very good point. Mm. And I should ask you, are you going to be able to have time to make the rounds to book fairs over the summer season? I'm doing my best. Of course, sometimes working for the press means uh, my schedule's constantly up in the air. If something happens, I got to be there. If there's a fair, I usually have to cover it. So... So, but I'm doing my best. I've I've had a, I've had a little bit of time to get out and about a little bit. For instance, uh, a few weeks ago, I had an author event in Lakeville. It was a bit of a slow day, but it was like I showed up with nine books and I left with two. So, and I was just there a few hours, four or five hours. So it was, yeah, it was really a nice place and a lot of people, and it was also really encouraging because it still means, you know, people are interested in books. That's a good day for it's, a writer. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. So yeah, I, I'm available. You know, if anyone wants to reach out to me, I got my uh, my contact info might be around here somewhere. But if that if it's not, just uh, look me up on Fox Point, and that's with an E on the end because as Kirsten says, we are fancy. So just look me up. Look me up on Fox Point, and you can find me there. And I know there's a little tag there that's you know available for events. Just get a hold of me, and you know I'd love to hear you. Is there anything real quick that I haven't asked that you want to be sure to let the audience know? We got we got that book in, so that's good. I will put it up on the screen, too. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to know what kind of book you're getting into here, you know, it's science fiction. I'd say it's kind of fantasy, too, because it's kind of loose science fiction. Definitely young adult, 12 and up. And uh, reviews have been coming in, very positive reviews so far. And one of the things people usually say about it is... The ending. Again, I'm not spoiling it, but uh, they like the ending because it is unexpected in a good way. So if you like, if you like a really good twist ending, uh, apparently I have one. So that's surprise endings about. are always good. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being on the show, Benjamin. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure.